Live right now with Kinetic Chaos Podcast number 47. We're, uh, we're actually live streaming this and playing around with some stuff, so bear with us for just one second. As you can see, we now have a monitor, and hopefully that doesn't screw anything up. I hope, well, I don't think it will, but we are putting a load on the, uh, wait, what minute, what? Yeah. On, on the system, so trying to get it to uh, bring up the feed, because we are live. Come on, everyone, this is good TV right now. Why doesn't it show me that we're live? Anyway, is everyone ready for the weekend? I hope they are. Um, I know that I am, as always, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Big time. There we go. Well, there's one feed. Okay, we're looking good there. That's a feed of me watching us. Oh, I wanted to bring it up right there. Okay. So we can can that if you don't, yep. don't have like two different live streams going. Yep. So it okay, us. here we go. Okay. Can I have a Chaos Podcast 47. Three, two. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. This is Kinetic Chaos Podcast number 47. I am your host, Will, joined as always by my good friend, Wes. Right here I am. How are we doing this evening? Outstanding. This afternoon. You, uh, we have some, wait, we've got some uh, me listening to us, which will create feedback, so I fixed that real there quick. You go. And uh, yeah, if you're watching live with this or on the YouTube channel, you can actually see we've got a, a big monitor up now, but we're actually going to use that to kind of go over some of the stories that we're going to cover today. So we, uh, I'm going to be going back and forth from my notes and whatnot on the iPad, but um, let's get in something good to happen to us. What, uh, you got some? Yeah, my wife and I had a little impromptu yeah, date night. Yeah, I hear that on and, the uh, PNP. Yeah, we... Uh, Got some, scored some tickets from a, a friend of ours, uh, so we got to go to the Parade of Homes and uh, check out the 10 houses, and I uh, read that this is the first time, that they, I don't know how many years they've been doing the Parade of Homes here, but for, for a long time, but this is the first time in history that all the houses, and there were 10 of them, all the houses were over a million bucks. Well, I can see now, oh, yeah. in the current you know status of, of the market, how easy that would be, but... When and you think of a these were on Camas Meadows Golf Course too, which of oh, course wow. is going to drive it up. So is that over by Two Creeks, that condo complex? I haven't been. It's to it. it's just if you're in the parking lot of the Camas Meadows Clubhouse, it's to your right, like three hundred yards. Oh, okay. And how big were they? And let's get Small, The smallest one was three thousand square feet. Oh wow. And, and the biggest? Up, up, I think forty. No, maybe five. Maybe five k. On the big, I can't remember now. I know, but I know the smallest one was. Because somebody is joking, don't you have any smaller houses or something like that? Somebody is joking around with one of the builders, and they're like, no, the smallest one here is 3000 Really? Yeah. Well, I were you impressed by them? I am not easily impressed yeah, by them. Yeah, uh, several I was very impressed by. Um, we actually did them in reverse order because we took a wrong turn down the, uh, the pathway. So we actually started with house number 10 and worked our way backwards to one. Um, really? But uh, I would say the number one is my least favorite. Of them all, um, really? it was very. It felt like rooms were very small, kind of chopped up, and not laid out well, which is kind of weird. But everything else, uh, for the most part, everything was uh, the nice wide open floor plans, which I like. Massive, massive kitchens, which were just insane. I'm sure. Um, but uh, and the first, well, that is to say, the last three for who, the first three for us, because we were going in the reverse order, um, were right on. I don't know what hole it was, but right on a green. So oh, really? And they had pools wow. in the backyard, so you could sit there in your pool and watch people put on the green right, right outside your back fence there. That's something that I haven't seen that much. And I've been to numerous parade homes and all that kind of the fancy houses and whatnot, but pools are not something that you see a lot. I was very surprised. The first, I think, the first three houses, so that would be uh, 10, 9, and 8, I think, all had pools. I was very surprised to see that. Wow. Not only pools, but... Uh, Little like uh, clubhouse cabana, you know, changing house, a little yeah. little tiny house there for changing and stuff like that. Boom, yeah, and uh, all of them had huge outdoor kitchens. Yeah. Oh man. my goodness! One of them even had a pizza oven. No kidding. Um, like a stone one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the the ones that look like uh, the little igloo. igloo yeah. yeah. Oh, it was insane. Wow. Yeah, you don't see much of that. And as somebody with a background in real estate, typically. I, I'm not a big fan of having a pool and a listing and things like that, 
because of the cost involved in owning them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's um, if it's something revolving around the, the electricity, the cleaning, and then we get into the you know having the homeowners insurance and liability, and the liability of having every kid in the neighborhood over at your house you know swimming there and, and all those types of things, and then you only use it. What five, they're all outdoor, right? Oh, yeah, five yeah. months out of the year. So you're as a matter of fact, it was funny while we were touring one of them. There was a little downpour, and we were looking out the pool. You could just see the rain just splattering in the pool, all really? the raindrops and stuff. But yeah, they were gorgeous, gorgeous houses. I would definitely lean towards the ones that were right on the golf course versus the ones that were kind of around the corner. Um, those were nice too, and they, and they back to a wooded area, so it was nice and private. But the ones like smack on the golf course were really sweet. Was it was there an overarching theme that was going through the houses? Uh, no, each each house had a pretty much their own theme. Um, one of them was kind of a lodge aspect with the exposed t the exposed wood ceilings and big timbers going through them. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a few different modern ones. One of which had exposed steel I beams all throughout. So very really? like, very industrial and modern looking, pretty cool. Um, including going up the side of the staircase, they left the I beam exposed uh, for the side of the staircase, the okay. structure of it. Yeah. Wow. Um, and uh, that that same house, they told us also that uh, they actually covered them up with the drywall. You can see in the garage, but the it was a three car garage that had I beams running through it for support, so it did not have to have a pole in the center. So it was a, you walk out into a three car garage and it's wide open. There's no structural support at all. So it's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, a lot of times you see those. You'll have one that are the the ultra modern, you know, super modern. And then you have one that's kind of the lodge look with exposed mm -hmm. beams and things like that. And those are the ones that I tend to gravitate yeah, for. Yeah. The ones that look like the I don't know, woodsy or anything like that, but not so, you know, I don't know, kind of like uh, in Christmas Vacation, what was the, the neighbor's house with all the, oh, yeah. I can't remember yeah. all their names off, off the top of my head, but anyway, so something good that happened to me was Derek had his very first football game yeah. last night. We had the Jamboree last Saturday tonight. Look at you enjoying an ice cold beverage. We'll you call bet. it a beverage in a it bottle. Um, yeah, he had his very first football game up in the Dow's. The Dowels, Oregon. So yeah, that was a nice little trip in the rain. I got to follow somebody up Highway 14, uh, driving 45 miles an hour. Or no, no, actually 45 was about the fastest they got. 35 was what we yeah. averaged, 35 to 40. And there was no one in front of them. It was just a Dodge pickup. And I, I could not understand why they were driving so slow. Then they tried to pull over three times and couldn't make the decision. What I found <laughs> hilarious was they pulled up or they pulled over finally, and I squirted by them. And then they pulled out right in front of two other cars. Wow! And made them slow down to thirty-five miles an hour. So that was pretty funny. And and well, it wasn't funny at the time. Yeah. It may have been a curse word or eleven used in their uh, in their general direction. So well, with that, let's. Uh, Let's get into our first good news story of the day. That's uh, that there was a car auctioned off three times in support of orphaned siblings. Yeah, this is a, a sad story to begin with, but kind of a cool story to end up with. This is a uh, two siblings, a six-year-old and a three-year-old, whose parents were killed in an automobile accident and are being raised by their grandparents now. And they evidently got some hearing issues. They got some some long term medical issues with the two children, so it costs. They have a lot of hospital bills starting to mount up, and so their father, before he was killed, had a classic 1973 Pontiac, and I can't remember exactly what kind of Pontiac it was. But anyway, he was in the middle of restoring it uh, when he passed away. So the grandparents thought, well, you know, we let's try to sell this car to raise some funds to yeah, help absolutely. with medical bills. So they put it up for auction, and the auctioneer, going into it, nobody knew the story behind it, but the auctioneer, when the car came up, explained the whole story to oh, the wow. crowd. And so then people got all fired up about it. So first guy, I mean, the first time around, uh, the winning bid was $29,000 for the car. Wow. And so he put it up. So they awarded him the car, and he said, nope, put it back up. And so they did it again. Next guy, next bid was for 30K. Same thing, that guy said, nope, but do it again. And so the third time around, somebody bid 20K on it, and then they called it good after that. So all they pooled all three of those bids together and gave all the cash to the family. So $79,000 by 
doing the math off the top of my head. That's incredible. Yeah. And to have people that are that willing to give up that kind of money, yeah. I mean, obviously you have to have some pretty deep pockets yeah. to be able to do that. So that's a, that's pretty darn exciting. So, and then, you know, again, like I say, almost every time we do this, it, it continues to give us faith in humanity amongst all the BS that we constantly see on a day to day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute basis. Yeah. So we, uh, we hope that's, and that's the purpose of doing this segment is to, show people, yes, there are still good things out there. So well, if, before we jump into the hot sheet is everyone that's watching can see, um, and those that will watch on YouTube, we've got a little bit of a, a change in our setup here. We now have a monitor where when I go over the, the hot sheet stories, we're gonna put those up on here so that those that are watching can see it, not that you'll be able to see it super well, but I'll try to zoom in a little bit. And we've got some banners up, and we're just making it a little more homely, not homely, Whoa, wow. <laughs> homey in here, uh, a little more homey for us. And we'll see, uh, we're going to work on our sound, deadening, proofing, all of that kind of stuff. Hopefully uh, people don't want us just to muffle ourselves. Yeah. We want to keep the voices, but lose the, the echo, echo and sounding like we're in a, I don't know, a tube of some sort. <laughs> so... Anyway, well, the first one on the hot sheet is this Hurricane Florence, and boy, howdy, she is packing a punch. I, the footage that I've seen, I haven't seen that much of it because <laughs> I actually don't have a weather channel, but her Jim Cantor on Dan Patrick this morning, and it's incredible. Yeah, so this, uh, fortunately, not that any hurricane's good, but fortunately, that uh, yesterday it was downgraded from a Cat 4 down to a 2, so that helps out a little bit. And it's supposed to make landfall overnight tonight, so just a few hours from now, they'll start, uh, you know, spilling the brunt of it, not that they aren't already. Yeah. A couple interesting facts. The diameter of this thing from outer band to outer band, the full width of this hurricane, bigger than the state of Washington. Wow. That's nuts. I saw the, there, there was a shot from space, yes. up, and that was incredible. Yeah. I, seeing any type of hurricane and, and from space and the... the what mother nature can do and how i'm just in awe of it it's incredible and one other incredible fact is that yesterday when it was still a category four uh one of the buoys out in the ocean mm -hmm. measuring the waves 83 foot wave human that's in <laughs> i can't even fathom that what, what if you're on an ocean freighter or, yeah. or something and i mean it's not like those things are steaming along at 30 knots or right. anything like that you know, are these guys able to steer clear? I mean, hopefully they are. I but would. what if there's anything out there? That it's got to capsize. I, I can't oh, see yeah. that something could survive that. Yeah. I mean, even the Titanic that was never supposed to sink. I, I just, I, even those super tankers, they have to be something that would get, it would just be, I don't know. It'd be neat if they had a camera on one of those buoys, uh, though. Oh, yeah. Like a GoPro or something, yeah. <laughs> just broadcasting, if they, or even recording it and then posting it yeah. to YouTube or something. That would be really neat to see. So, I, uh, and we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, um, there'll be more know. to come, unfortunately, because there's they're, they're more concerned at this point with the, the rainfall and storm surge than the wind itself, because it's not, uh, now that the, the wind... The rain is the big, what they set to 40 inches or something? Yeah, because the problem is, I guess, right when it's uh, supposed to make landfall, it's supposed to stall out, so it's just going to park itself there and just dump rain forever, so... Well, that's what most of the storms do, is, you know, they lose the power of the wind and things like that, but they continue, the rain is stuck in the clouds and it's gonna go all the way into, who knows how, well, yeah. who knows how far into the Carolinas there. Right. So, well, number two in the hot sheet, we've, this is a story that is close to us here at home. And I've actually seen my, seen my Facebook page start to fill up with stories about this and people commenting. And I hope they don't politicize it, but that's kind of what happens nowadays. Right. But, and as we, you can see, hopefully on the monitor here, we've got the uh, m missing hiker that from a couple weeks ago has been found dead, and it was apparent that it was a cougar that had attacked her. Yeah, so she was uh, missing for almost two weeks. Uh, previous to this, uh, about a week ago, they found her car in the parking lot of a hiking trail, so they knew that she was likely out there somewhere. 
Um, so they kept searching for her, and they did finally find her a couple days ago uh, dead, and the medical examiner did uh, determine that it was a cougar attack that had killed her. The interesting story that I, interesting part that I would, didn't know is that this is the first confirmed cougar attack, uh, cougar killing a human in the state of Oregon. Yeah, in history. Yeah, in that's, history, yeah. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And, I mean, again, just like when we talked about Molly Tibbetts or anyone else, when we have the missing person, it is, it is good to have the closure. Right. But in this type of situation, you think of what what somebody is experiencing when they go through an attack like this. I don't know if you've ever seen the book called Alaska Bear Tales. When I lived in Alaska, I, I obviously I encountered bears. I mean, I had seen a number of grizzly bears in person. Not something I would recommend you do. But I have read the book. There's two of them, and maybe there's more now. But it it is a story all about what it's like to to go through these these are true stories and just how fast and powerful these machine these killing machines really yeah, are yeah and what kind of impact they can they can have on on their prey and, and like a bear you, obviously cougars are incredibly fast but people underestimate how fast a bear is but yeah. all of these you you just have to you have to know your surroundings you have to know what you're dealing with and and be aware of the fact that they're always out there, mm -hmm. especially with the cougar. They're hunting you. Right. And and we won't get into the kind of the, uh, the, whole, the whole hunting cougars and the hounds and the stuff. Wildlife like management. Yeah. And that's, aspect, yeah. Well, because the state of Oregon and Washington ended the use of hounds to be able to hunt cougars. And ever since then, we've seen a, a huge population of them. So, yep. well, that's... Uh, it's sad, but I'm, I mean, again, I, I don't, I don't like that we had to have the report on something like this. But closure is a good thing in right. a situation like this. This next story um, regarding a Dallas police officer down in Dallas, Texas, is I, this one's kind of a, a crazy story. This this Dallas police officer shot a man that was she thought was in her apartment, but she actually went to the wrong apartment. Yeah, this. There's a whole bunch of stuff that just doesn't make sense. It sounds pretty fishy, but yeah, you, you basically said that she supposed, and this is her side of the story. She thought she was, you know, opening the door and going into her apartment. It turns out it was a neighbor's apartment, and so the she floor below her. Though, yeah, really? she she saw this guy in the apartment and thought he was a burglar, so she she shot and killed him, and uh, just I don't know the the story seems kind of thin to me. It seems a little weird. Um, but but end result is that she was arrested and has been charged with manslaughter, so there is a trial pending. But uh, the, her story is is well inconsistent to say the best or to say the least. It's um, like you said. It, I wouldn't say it's flimsy. It's just that how does this happen? I understand yeah. maybe you park in the wrong floor, but they even the neighbors even you know said that they there was inconsistencies in the way that she approached the apartment in that that she had told them to get out or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard some differing stories, so that's what I'm saying. The whole thing is kind of fishy. It's like we're not getting the whole story, definitely. And it was, you don't turn the lights on, you know, you, the door was cracked. Um, that's what the neighbors had heard. They heard her banging on the door yelling, let me in. And she said that the door was open. That's what now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so that's, I mean, that's a huge difference. Yeah. How do you get in? I mean, her card key or whatever didn't work. So that's a, that's one that we, I just, I don't want to see anyone have to, you know, suffer through this. But as we see up here on the monitor, you know, we've got the mom and she is, you know, sounds like a fairly prevalent person in the, in the area. Right. So yep. that's a, to have to deal with something like that is terrible. So. Well, number four here, you know, are we number three or number, number four? Yeah, yeah number four. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is a good story. You got the yeah. middle class income has reached the highest level level ever recorded. Yep. So uh, U.S. Census uh, dropped a report uh, Wednesday, so yesterday, as we are recording this, uh, regarding the median household income in the U.S. and uh, the number that they came back with for 2017 was 61,372, and this is the first time in history we've ever gone over the 61,000 mark for the median household income, so. And that's and that's adjusted by inflation. I think they said that if all numbers, all numbers being equal, 1999, we were almost about the same, 
as as to you know percentage wise right. of, right. of what the what the income was back then, but um, I you know we we love to see it now. We're getting into the you know wh- why is that? Is it because of the tax re- you know the tax cuts and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff? Again, we're politicizing something that. Uh, let's just look at it for what it is. It's good news that people yeah. are out there; they're getting jobs, um, and a lot of it was that we're we're taking folks that were part-time employees and they're you know full-time employees yep. and things like that. The one thing that I found interesting was that the number of people with health insurance has not increased. It's it's kind of gone static in the last well, few years. and that coincides with the repeal of the individual <laughs> mandate too. Yeah. Um, so they're no longer forced to buy health insurance. So that that was obviously skewing the numbers before because you had a gun to your head that you had to buy health insurance or pay a fine. So that skewed the numbers upward. Um, but now that that's been relaxed and you can opt not to have health care again like a free person should. Um, so that I think that that accounts for the stagnation in healthcare enrollment. So I, yeah, and that's that's a you know like you said we should be able to have the choice, but. The re- where I have the issue with that, and we'll make this quick, is <laughs> when the the bills come back on us. Yeah. Because you know you can't be denied health care exactly. anywhere, and so when they end up, whether it's going through bankruptcy or whatever it is, if it trickles down to us as taxpayers, or it's a major corporation that go like a Peace Health or somebody like that goes out of business because of so much of this, then that's a that's an issue. But, yeah. Well, again, the heavy lifting's over. All right, it's like the heavy that. lifting. Fun stuff. Over. Yeah, it is. And this is a freestyle Thursday getting or freestyle episode getting ready for you uh, your weekend here and whatnot. So we uh, we as always had some fun topics. We're actually we took one of the hot sheet items and we actually thought that this was so fun that we would move it into the freestyle because Wes and I have all kinds of fun. Uh, no thoughts on this, especially with the fact that he le- he led with Taco Bell. Oh wait, wait, wait! We've got a flashback follow up. Oh yeah, let's go we'll run through that real quick. Yeah, let's do that. We have facial recognition has caught a woman using a fake passport. Yeah, we talked about this in the last episode that uh, Dulles Airport in Washington D.C. was going to start using facial recognition in their customs areas. People coming in to try to cross check, you know, uh, to see if they're legit or not. And they did, they caught somebody this last week. There was a 26 year old woman from Ghana coming in. She's a, a citizen of Ghana. Really? Uh, however, she was holding a US passport, which was obviously completely forged because she's not a US citizen. Yeah. And so they said that it was actually the facial recognition software that first, uh, I don't know, she was already a known person to be in the database or how they recognized her, but they did attribute this. Not to say that the actual customs agent may not have caught it after the fact, but they did say that she was it was first uh, brought to their attention because of this the software. Good, and you know, I like I always say, I rail against the fact that we're using AI and things like that. But when it starts to work, and we're seeing that yeah. it's going to actually come to fruition and hopefully provide us with really valuable information like catching somebody like this, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Yep. So again, now the heavy lift. Our favorite there. restaurant we got our, No, your favorite <laughs> restaurant. I even heard that you and your wife went to uh, McDonald's. We, we were desperate night. because it was like... You're was, never that desperate. It was late at night. Sorry. I know. We were late at night and yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's it? The late kid. at night? That's your excuse? Just run through and grab a fry for the kids because it... They didn't have killing me. Yeah. What, what's late night? Eight. That's not late night. KM is still open. You can go through there and get some garlic fries. Yeah, and I gotta stop at the bank to get a second mortgage first oh, before I go there. Jeez, but <laughs> you're killing me, small. No, no, we're just trying to go for the old hit and run because it was getting close to the kids' bedtime, and Tia had to record a podcast, and we we're up against the clock, so just it was crunch time. <laughs> there you go. I like it. I like it. Well, what we're going to talk about here is is the fact that uh, Harris Poll came out and they they uh, surveyed 77,000 people and Taco Bell came out as the <laughs> number one Mexican restaurant in the United States and as we talked about just before we went on air this is probably based name or more on name recognition than anything I I just you know, this stinks and these are <laughs> hey like, see what you did there uh, and these are all based on chains. Obviously, when you survey 70, 77,000 people, you're not going to get a plurality of people agreeing on some random mom and pop Mexican restaurant somewhere. So obviously, the chains are going to win out on all these categories. But the first thing I thought of was, 
is why not something like maybe a little bit better, like Chipotle, but maybe all the E. coli scares and the oh well listeria I, and everything else that scared people off. But I thought, man, if you're gonna pick a, a fast food type Mexican chain restaurant, at least do something like Chipotle, not Taco Bell. Taco, yeah, Chaco. What, what was I saying there? Yeah. Uh, well, Chipotle or even something you know like a Baja Fresh. Baja Fresh is a Baja Fresh yeah. is, you know, they're owned by Wendy's, and so, yep. and Chipotle's owned by, uh, who they owned by? They got Baja. They just got, well, yeah, I thought they just got taken over recently, because they, because of their financial issues. Um, anyway, that doesn't yeah. matter, yeah. but I, I can see, and, and, you know, what they were talking about, why they're doing so well is, is a lot of advertising, marketing, things of that nature, that that's what people, you know, even if they haven't been there, they're yeah. still going to, in the poll, they're still going to name that as the number one restaurant because it's in front of their face every other ad on television, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's, you know, I, I have not been there since uh, April of 2003. <laughs> David will live in infamy. I can tell you, I think it was around April 12th. April, probably April 10th, because we were going to the coast for my dad's birthday, and just before that, I got... I got the old uh, Montezuma's Revenge, <laughs> and it hit me hard for about four days. I was down and out. So yeah, so since 2003, April 10th-ish, after a poker game, and, and a uh, Crunchwrap Supreme, which you love to flame me with constantly, and I, you know, all in good fun. And yeah. Look at that smile That's on your right. face. Uh, you that such the Cheshire cat when you talk about the classic Taco story. Bell with me. <laughs> I attempted, I will say I attempted it one time in probably 2007, yeah. and I got a bean burrito, uh, and I promptly took one bite of it, that was it. Powdered, dehydrated, reconstituted beans? Yeah, that was a lot of words there yeah. to, for fake beans, and yeah. that's all they were. It exactly. wasn't fake about how bad it tasted, that's for damn sure, <laughs> but no, that's, uh, that was horrible. But some of the other things that came up here yeah. as the top... Uh, as the top restaurants and whatnot in the area. We got the best burger chain as Five Guys. I am not down with Five Guys at all. I they're, think they're, they're okay. Hard. In terms of, if we're talking, obviously, my favorite's in and out but they're pretty regional. West Very Coast. Very regional. West Coast plus Texas, basically. Um, but so if, you're if we're, well, they're already, oh, yeah, they're just, yeah, yeah, but maybe coming to Salem soon. Um, but in terms of like a nationwide aspect, obviously Five Guys is nationwide, so that's again why they're going to have the, the name out there and why they would get this you know, garner as many votes. But I don't mind Five Guys; it's okay. But I would I would take In and Out over Five Guys. Yeah. Well, I, the thing I didn't like about Five Guys was the burger itself wasn't too bad. I did find the fact that there was so much grease involved in it that it, the bun that they used was not of a high structural integrity. Yeah, it's all it got, melted on Yeah, there. exactly. And so by the, you know, you got halfway through it and I've only been there one time and this was before I went gluten-free. It, it was all right. I mean, I, I like the, you know, non-uniform burger right. kind of, you know, smash down, that yeah. kind of thing along the lines of smash burger or whatever. But the thing that really turned me off for them was the fries. It was so. Are you serious? Oh, they're garbage. Oh, see, that's that's what I like is their fries. The cake you did the Cajun style with all the seasoning on it. I didn't get like that. that. I don't. In fact, I remember it. We just got the. I, they have several different fry options, don't they? I thought they just have two, just regular and Cajun. Okay, it's like a change. It's been a long time. Yeah. But I, I was just. It's so greasy and they're limp. I don't like limp fries. Oh, I do. No, no. I, I just can't get behind the limp fry. And even, you know, Burgerville, if you get ones that are a little bit old, they can be a little bit limp, but these were, I mean, they were just mm, kind of all floppy, and I just <laughs> couldn't get very floppy. That's like, that's like home style, though, man. Oh, I don't oh know. no, 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 no. If you get the correct temperature, and you use, you do like Dix does up in Seattle, okay. theirs is a, is a little limp, but they have a little bit of a crunch to them. You're trying not, you're trying to keep yourself together. So, so how about for a throwback for the, the old shoe days, like Chuck and Sherry's right here on the corner where Mary Jane's is now, they had some killer shoestring fries. I didn't ever go there. Oh really? I, in fact, I cannot remember one time eating there. I remember the restaurant because we went to a school with the kids yeah. 
Derek was his name. I think. Yes, that's right. I think and I can't remember his last name, but his folks owned that. I, I yeah. don't think we ever went to eat there. They had good burgers. They were like the same kind of smash thing. They were kind of a weird form. I think they made them like oblong, almost oh, really? burger patties, but their fries were just awesome. Hmm. Yeah. No, I, I don't remember that. I I will say uh, old fashioned made fries. I yeah. like the shoestring ones. I really like steak fries. Like uh, uh, the one of my favorite reasons of going to Red Robin well, I mean, is their fries. They have a little crunch. They're, they're not super crispy or anything like that. You know, I, I think McDonald's, if there is one redeeming quality to them, is their french fries. If, yeah, there's no potato. It's all st- it's fried starch. I need what do you it, think I need, a potato is? I mean, all it is is fried like starch. It's caked in, like, stuff. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. But anyway, so I, I like... You get a good fry, 375, good oil, nice and crunchy, fresh out. Oh, man, that's yeah. pretty hard to beat. So yeah. some of the other stuff, we'll run through it kind of quickly. Yeah. Chick-fil-A here, that's one of your – that's your no- – I still have not been there. You have not taken me out on date night. Right, we'll, Evidently, we'll you take it. your wife out on yeah. date night, we'll but do you don't it. take me out we'll on date night. have plenty of GF options there for you. So. I know. I haven't been there. Now, this Blaze Pizza is the best pizza I, I have never had Blaze Pizza, but if I'm going to say big, uh, big pizza chain, Domino's is, has stepped their game up, but okay. I'm, they still, this is not including gluten-free. I think Pizza Hut has the best pizza out of all of them because I think the pan pizza, yeah. it's crunchy. Again, I, I'm such a texture guy. Yeah. I'm so weird like that, but their pan pizza, oh, I love that because it would be... It's almost like they put butter the or butter something in it, oh, yeah, and when you yeah. bite it, it has a crunch to it, and yeah. I really like that. So, the best sandwich, Subway, is garbage. Oh, God, I couldn't believe that. It's horrible. Yeah, again, though, no, it goes to like, like how many about. of them there are. Yeah. That's terrible. Uh, best ice cream, Ben and Jerry's. Bronx, get out of here. <laughs> I think mean, call Bronx, please. This is, yeah, Wes said right before we went on air that now that we have this kind of operation here, that... We kind of feel like Wayne's World, and when my dog comes in and he's tapping along on the floor, and I gotta tell my wife to call him, lay down, lay down, home. See, there he is. He's our ambassador. But uh, the best ice cream you can get behind, though, Ben and Jerry's, oh, yeah. absolutely. I I heard though that they have some issues with uh, something with their ice cream lately, but no, hands down, they have the best ice cream I've ever had. Yeah. Highest quality, absolutely. Mm-hmm. What's your go-to? Well, I, oh, ben and Jerry's? Uh, the cinnamon Flavor buns. Bun. Cinnamon bun. Okay, I've yeah. not had that one because it's got the cinnamon roll in it. Right. Mine's Cherry Garcia if I don't want like heavy-duty chocolate. But I think that gun to my head, if I had to pick one, it would be fish food. <laughs> fish food is just because it's got it all. It's got the marshmallow. It's got chocolate. It's got little chocolate pieces and some caramel in there. I may have to have some of that today. Yeah, yeah. Honey, we may be running into the store for some Ben and Jerry's <laughs> later. So, well, that's uh, that's the first. One. That was kind of a joint freestyle. Uh, you have oh here here we yeah, go. Is that Hojo in there? Brahms? What's Brahms? It's not around here, obviously. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> is that Hojo or Tia? That's going to be a KCP account. So anyway, so you have a uh, Brahms is wagging his tail. I heard this at 4 o'clock this morning. I got up to go to the bathroom, and all of a sudden, this here whack, 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 and weights came up. Anyway, so what's your, do uh, you have a go to on the uh, your first freestyle? Maybe? Yeah, we're going to go a couple top threes for us today. So, top three, if you're, this is inspired by us going to the Brain Hubs. Mm-hmm. If you're building the, your brand new greenhouse ground up, top three must have features within the home. Top three things that you, you must, it can be an item or a, a specific room or whatever, but top three, let's call them features, top three features of a house that you have to have. In the home or on the property? I would say, because you already mentioned one of the things that I would say would be a deal killer for me if I had two million bucks to build a house, and that's an outdoor kitchen. Yeah. Okay, can I include that? Yes, because that's on my list too. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So yeah, it's, so, it's attached to the house, so yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I would, in fact, that probably wouldn't be number three. Number three for me would be a um, entertainment room. Like, a, uh, I have, like this house is the openness of having the ability to have a gaming room and a theater type thing. I'm going to mix those kind of yeah, together. Yeah. I, I love that in, in houses and having the 
separate area away from the living quarters, you know, living room, that kind of thing, where the kids can go. You got the nice TVs and you got the maybe a foosball table or something or pool table. I, I absolutely love that. That, that. that just missed my list. I would say that's number four. Side note, one of those houses there in the main living room is all open with the kitchen, open concept kitchen, living room all in mm -hmm. one big space with a two story ceiling. Um, above the fireplace, side by side mounted, uh, dual 75 inches. That's what I'm filling getting. up the whole thing. Going, oh man, it was insane. That's yeah, and for my Super Bowl party when I have that, I'm gonna have the 65 with two 50s next to it. Actually, yeah. not even for Super Bowl for New Year's Day. So get ready. Write this right. down on your on your calendar. New Year's Day is gonna be the 65 because now that I can run Rose Bowl. Oh, oh, we'll have every Fiesta. Everything. Every TV will be used and have games going and. We'll have some gaming and stuff like that. So there may be an invite going out to some of our listeners that may get interested in that because we'll have some food too. So, so number three for me, because I said the, the media room, man cave kind of thing just missed my list. So number three for me is the outdoor kitchen slash living area. Because at least the places have like the full blown furniture, flat screen TVs, oh, yeah. kitchen, everything. It's like a whole family room outside. There, so yeah, I have to be all over that. And it's, you know, around here when when we get the nice weather, where do we want to go? The first place we want to do, or first thing we want to do is get the hell out of the house because we've been stuffed in here for six months or seven months. And what's even better with the, the, uh, several of these houses that have these massive outdoor living areas that were under cover, but they're still outdoor so you're exposed to the temperature, they have gas heaters in the ceiling yeah. blowing, get, blowing the heat down on you in the winter time, so that'd be a sweet deal. And those are incredibly effective as mm -hmm. well. And that's, you know, the whole thing, you have the the patio, maybe even have the pool out there, and you know, until it, it maybe even starts to snow if the pool is heated, mm -hmm. you can have all that stuff under cover, yep. and half of your kitchen can be out, half of it can be in, and you can use it all year long when you've got those heaters and things like that. So, number two for me is gonna be the, kind of the master suite. Okay. I, uh, as I've gotten older, I appreciate having that master suite. Uh, never had one, but I, I like the idea of it. Uh, actually, this house kind of has that, and having the, and when I say that, I want the, the bathroom with the rain shower and all of the spigots. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's got like the eight heads around you and the brain and there's plenty of those going on. Oh right yeah, you can just see me. I'm doing the, the Chris Farley on the, uh, the, uh, the I'm a maniac thing. <laughs> oh, you can just see me and they're going crazy with the cheese with it. So yeah, no, I, I'd say that's my number two. Number two for me is just an enormous chef's kitchen. Like most of the kitchens in these places are just unbelievable, including one that I've seen I've seen the concept before, but this was on TV or whatever. This is the first time I've seen it in person and actually been there. Is the dual islands? Oh, so you really? got you got your you know your usual cabinet set up on the wall with your range and stuff over there, and then you got your massive island in the center, and it's basically just like a work prep service. So like you want to roll pastry out or whatever. So it's a big slab of granite on an island out in the middle, and then yet another like four or five feet away is a second island. So it's stacked out of the kitchen and that one has your eating bar. Really? So it's like a dual island setup. So the kit, therefore the kitchen is just massive because you've got these dual huge islands out there. That was, those are really cool looking. Yeah, so I, your, your number two is my number one. We're gonna go right into that. Obviously for me, I want the kitchen. I want, the, I, I want a kitchen that's got a fireplace in it. Because I love the dual fireplace indoor outdoor setup. I don't know if you've seen those Bronx lay down. Bronx lay down. It's good TV again, kid. I, I, I love that. So I want a kitchen that has a lot of light. Yes. I want, um, I'm a huge uh, natural light guy. And I want that kind of stuff that you're talking about. Even I want the double ovens. I want the sub zero six foot by six yep. foot free yep. fridge and freezer and all that. Um, huge amount of prep space and because for me and then I, I would almost want like a, a dumb waiter outside where I think it would be really neat to right from your your uh, your um, counter space have like a door that folds down that you can slide the food out so on right on the other side I've got my grill I've got my smoker yeah. and my outdoor kitchen so I'm not carrying it through the living room or something like that 
all you do is just pop the door down, hand it out, or, or whatever it ends up being, like a drive through And I, that's what I'm all about. I want tall ceilings. I want my pans hanging from the ceiling over a gas range with um, a flat top and a grill. You know, I want the, I want to, so I want eight burners. I want a full grill over the gas and I want a flat top that yeah. I can cook with. So, you know, it's only a four or $500,000 kitchen that I'm asking for. But hey, you said the uh, money yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, so that's, right. that's what's important. So what's your number one? I was gonna say one of the things you mentioned, like the dual sub Z's going on, mm -hmm. um, there a couple of houses had that uh, with a new twist that I had not seen is in between them was a wine fridge. Oh yeah, so it was about like mm -hmm. a foot and a half wide. Fit, it, it, I think it's part. It, it was Sub Z branded, so it's probably the full unit come together like that. But it's a couple of houses had that where it had this a, a skinny little wine chiller right in between the two Sub Zs. It's really cool. Looking. That that and that's just and as I've gotten older, I, I like the nook that has the the wine type yep, stuff because yep. I like <laughs> having the opportunity to. Open that up because opening wine sometimes isn't the most elegant thing when you have one hand. <laughs> so I like having that ability to kind of go into the little nook, but having that cooler there, yeah. that is really neat. So that's uh, giving people tips, you know what yeah. I mean? The, those that want to go out there and, and build us a kitchen there or build go. us a house for a couple million dollars, KCP would be more than willing to accept that. We'll put it in the company's name and make sure that we have lots of big parties. So there we go. That's a, uh, oh, go ahead. So I say number one for me oh, was yeah, your yeah. number two-ish kind of, because you mentioned the master suite and then you dovetailed into the shower thing. Uh -huh. The master shower itself is number one Just for the me. shower itself. That, huh? Oh man, it's my dream to have like the big walk-in shower. There's no doors. It's like, it's, it's like the size of a room. Yeah. You just walk in and there's no door needed, no shower door needed. You just walk in there and it has like 85 shower heads, got the waterfall or 85? The, yeah. That's <laughs> a lot the, of shower heads. Got the, uh, the rain shower head coming from the ceiling. Yeah. That's the whole banana, man. That's just, the, that is a huge one for me is the rain. I, I don't know why, because I still have not had, I mean, I've never been in one of those monster fancy ones like that. Yeah. When I worked for Mike in the plumb at the plumbing company, when when he did that, we installed a few of those, and it was just the the idea of having all those jets flying at you. Yeah. And again, you know, the great minds think alike. You and I come together on about the same thing, so that's a you know, that's pretty cool. So, well, for me, I'm going to start with a, a top three as well. What are your top three luxury cars? Oh, oh. I mean, I'm talking. Everything out the window, budget doesn't right, matter, right. any of those. What are your, if you had to nail three luxury cars, and I'm, I'm not talking classics, I'm yeah. talking off the lot today. Yeah, I, for number three, I, I'd go like with a Rolls Phantom, just for the classic elegance kind of look to it, but you oh, still yeah. got the, the panache. Oh, with the deal. I mean, to, you used two words that we probably have to do spell check on. <laughs> I don't know what the other one was, but you used that one and panache. Not so, Panera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, roll, I'd say Rolls. I'd go three. I, yeah. I am. I'm a fan of the Rolls, although, um, yeah, I because I'm right there with you. I, I, the classiness of everything. I'm gonna use one. I've got a little bit different one for that. But my number three would be the uh, the Lamborghini Aventador. I, I'm a huge Lambo fan. I absolutely love that. So I'm gonna go with that. And I got some prices here for these the cars that I have. I, I actually looked up the prices. Okay. The Aventator comes in at $402,995, not $996. Steal of a deal. Yeah, but the you've got the Phantom coming in easily oh, to half a million. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and so that's, you know, that's, which one would you go for? One speed, one, okay, so what's your number two? Number two is that, the Lambo. You got a Lambo? Yeah. Well, we've also I also priced out the Huracan, which yeah. is which is for half the price. It comes in at two hundred and three thousand two ninety five. I I don't I mean there's actually not that big of a difference between the Aventator and the Huracan. The Aventator you've seen in in the Batman movies, but right. they're they're both gorgeous cars. I've been a Lambo fan. I had the black Countach. Uh, <laughs> you remember the poster oh, when yeah. you were a kid? Oh yeah. It it hung up above my above here in my room for as long as I could you know imagine. I just it was the 
the Mystique of the Lamborghini. And then they had, remember that TV show that came out and they had the Lamborghini truck that looked like a, uh, it looked like a Hummer. But it was, well, it was in yeah. Las Vegas. It was like this huh. specialized SWAT team. <laughs> and they drove around in these Lamborghini trucks. Huh. They had to shut the production down because they wrecked so many of them. It busted the budget. <laughs> I always got a kick out of that. So, uh, what's your number two? Oh, you no, want no, I'm no, sorry. My number yeah. two is the Ferrari 488. 488. I, I love Ferrari. Um, I think that if you would have asked me, asked me 10 years ago, I probably would have said Lamborghini, but the, the Ferrari, I go into the panache and the class of the Ferrari. I think that if we, you know, if we really break it down, the Lambo just screams the bag to me. Yeah. If we're putting the, those cars up, and I think that the Ferrari well, is class. just a classier yeah. vehicle, um, and I'm not talking performance or anything like that. And the, and the 488 actually comes in with a much better price at 252 800 um, again, nothing to sneeze at, but I think that that's a, it's a wonderful vehicle. And now we always have the Enzo Ferrari, which is around yeah, the, the million, million. Yeah. The, the million mark. And the, always, the thing that I always found interesting about the Enzo was that you had to own a Ferrari yeah. before you could buy yeah, one. Yeah, that's you funny. may have even had to own more than one. I can't remember, but I, uh, I always found that very interesting because I've never owned one. So yeah. unless we get, you know, we do really well. There we go. There we go. What's your uh, number? Number one, one is is Ferrari, and there's there's a few models I like. I would I would say 488 is in the top. One thing that I it was a must is it has to have the removable hard top, like the target mm -hmm. top kind of deal, the spider. Um, versus you, like you, so you can get the chest lettuce out like oh, yeah. 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 oh yeah, because like like the other ones like the California that they do is it's, it's it's like the strict hard top ones where you have no option to go to go cabrio. Nah, yeah, I need to be able to. We'll have the, the wind go through my receding hairline. Exactly. Uh, so Shaq actually bought one of those, and because it was a, a hard top, he actually had it permanently removed because he's obviously too big yeah. in to, to fit in the damn thing. So he had, I was watching, I don't know if it was Cribs or one of those, yeah. but they had, he had it on there that he just had it permanently removed. So he, luckily, he was in Southern California, so he didn't have to really worry about that. So for me, number one, I'm gonna go with the Aston Martin DBS Super yeah. Lagara. I have always been an Aston fan. Um, has nothing to do with James Bond. Uh, I, you know, whether it's the DB9, the Vantage, the Vanquish, any of those, but the DBS, which is their newest one, coming in at three hundred eight thousand and eighty-one dollars. How do they come up with the MSRP? Yeah, exactly. Just like zero eight one, not eight or two. What anyway? No, I, I, I think that Aston's when when you talk about that panache and I and I the what I really like is you've got the class and the luxury, but you've got the performance. Right. With it. Right. I, I mean you Bentleys are there too, you've got the Azure and the Continentals and things like that, but I I just and I Aston's are and I've always been one that kinda likes the one off from mainstream. Mercedes I love, BMWs I love, but Audi's I really yeah. love. And it's just that one thing that's just a little bit different than almost everyone, not everyone, because Audis are very popular, but it's just a little bit different than what the mainstream likes, and that's right. what that's where I come in on that one. So, I uh, and I'm a car guy. I always have been. I mean, since I was a kid, whether it's trucks, cars, I just motor vehicles have always been something that interested me. And, and to this day, I mean, even though I drive an old truck, it, it it's still something that the performance of that truck is something that I've always been interested in. So any of that, it's it's just fun. So, did you your number one? The, the Ferrari. Yeah, the Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you, what's your next one up on the my, old, uh, my, freestyle? My here? next and final freestyle is another top three. We're going to call this top three from your childhood, and we'll preface it maybe saying elementary to middle school age. Okay. So not not in the high school. We want to keep it a little older than that, a little further back <laughs> in the time machine. We're talking. The, original old school video game consoles like your, oh, yeah. your, That's your NES, your Sega, that kind of stuff. So that kind of generation, mm -hmm. your top three video games. Oh, video games. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, ooh. You jump off because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have, I, I just thought of one that I'm okay. going to have a battle over here. Yeah. So go ahead. Number three for me is Double Dragon 2. Yep. 
I love that. that. Love that. And uh, and all mine happen to be on the original classic NES. Mine, mine is too. That's the only one I grew up with. That's all I had when I was a kid. So that's all what I'm used to. Are you so. saying that you were, you know, you didn't have any? <laughs> I'm just giving giving you the business, but no, a, a Double Dragon. I can remember playing that, and the, in fact, I'm listening to the soundtrack in yeah. my head right yeah. now because it it was. Right along the, you know, the, the, um, not, the Eddie Murphy, uh, what the heck movie was he in? Axel Flory. Axel Foley. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Foley. Yeah. No, that, right up with that. So, okay, so number three for me, Legend of Zelda. Absolutely loved Legend of Zelda. And probably because I was not somebody that was oh, really good at video games. And to this day, I'm not. My kids just smoke me. Um, unless it's in um, Madden, I'm pretty good at that kind of stuff. But I was never one that was good at solving games and things like that. Probably because I didn't really put that much time and effort into them. It was, you know, I had a lot of other stuff going on, but I finally got to level eight and I beat whatever the end boss was in uh, Zelda. And, but that game was, was, it was so new and so unique at the time because it was Final Fantasy and you had all, you know, that kind of stuff. But Zelda was just, it was incredible. I loved Zelda, and so it was, and you had the PC games were starting to come around a little bit back then. I, I mean, I can remember playing them in Alaska, so I was eight or nine, and I was playing uh, just bowling, maybe even younger than that, on, on my dad's four foot by three foot PC. It was yeah. not even a PC back then, but no, I gotta go uh, Legend of Zelda for my number three. So, number two for me, Castlevania. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like that's Castlevania. that's a, always and and one, not two. Two is okay. It's the Castlevania two is okay. Two. It's not, but it's nowhere near as good as the, as the original. Really, so Castlevania one. For no, me. I I like Castlevania. I did. I don't remember two very yeah. much. Um, oh man, I just thought of another one. Okay. <laughs> um, ooh. I'm gonna give you an honorable mention when we're okay. done with this. Um, number two would be Excite Bike. <laughs> Excite Bike was, wow, well, man, I love that game, and it was it was so much fun just to pop that wheelie and, and you just heard the constant. I don't know why, but it yeah. brings me back to my childhood. I really love that game. So number one for me, I had to kind of <clears throat> battle a little bit to figure out which one I, what I'd go with the Super Mario's. But I, I like three, just because they introduced the raccoon tail that you yep. flying. You fly. So Super Mario Three is my number one. See, I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give all the Mario's my my honorable mention. Uh, I I love them. They were they were again. Uh, you, you just didn't see anything like that. Just from not Mario Brothers so much. Mario Brothers the original one. Right. And it was all right when Super Mario Brothers yeah. came out. That's when it kind of stuff got crazy. But Super Mario 3, and like you said, having the raccoon tail, having the ability to fly and all that kind of stuff, I really liked the Marios, and I thought they were well-made games. Yeah. But at that time, you know, these kids now, they, and I hate, again, get off my porch or get off my lawn, <laughs> kids, but they just don't, they don't understand what it was like for us to, when one of these games came out, it was a huge deal. And they were 50 bucks back then. Yep. I mean, it was going. I remember, you remember going to Toys R Us and picking the uh, the little paper the pick slip thing. Yeah, yeah, you pick the slip and it takes was, to the cage up front. Oh, the yeah. cage, and, and they, it was it, they made it almost. It wasn't that they meant to, but it was almost like an event. Yeah, getting that because I didn't get games very often yeah. or anything. And then when the Game Boy came out, I mean, that just yeah. flipped the script because it was just incredible to have a game that I could go in a car and I didn't have to. Whoop, sorry. I didn't have to look around at everything, and not right. that it was a good thing, but it was it was you know, Tetris, even Tetris. Oh, yeah. I just love Tetris, so my number one's gonna be Contra. Yeah, so that's so yeah, up down, up down, left right, left right, B A B A back, or you know, select start. I believe was our code. Yeah, something like that. So no, I I thought Contra was a heck of a good game. Um, it was you know. All of us guys would talk about it. We'd go to school and we'd talk about what we did in Contra and the the different guns that you could have. All of those kind of things were just so incredibly exciting to yeah. me that I, uh, I I just really liked it. Yep. So Very my cool. next one up in the uh, the old freestyle here is 
I'm going to ask you to name your top three local restaurants within 25 miles as local. Hmm. You want me to start? Yeah, so number one, Taco Bell. No, I'm just yeah, sorry. No, no. That is yeah, go ahead. I got a, I got a marinade on this one here. Uh, marinade. Yeah. yeah. So my number three is one that we actually reviewed here. We need to get back to that. We yes, need to we get do. back to yes, some of our food reviews as we continue the cooking show and stuff like that. Uh, my number three is going to be uh, Matt's barbecue, and actually I'm going to bring it up here on the uh, on the old uh, screen here so that we can see it because I think that if I can type, um, I think that they are one of I mean, there's a lot of really good restaurants. They, he is doing one of the best jobs I have seen in a long time when it comes to barbecue. I, I would put his with mine. I think he has that good, and, I, and obviously I'm biased because it's my, my barbecue, but he does a damn good job. Yeah. No one, I have not had barbecue as good as his since I was at the barbecue competition. And I love the simplicity of it. I love the fact that my dad bought me a fourteen dollar Bloody <laughs> Mary. That was awesome as well. But I, uh, Matt's Barbecue is going to go off at number three for me. I'm trying to bring him up here, but my yeah. interwebs are running slow right now. And he inspired me to put the pork belly burn in. I know we're going to be doing again here. Yeah, very soon. We're going to get into that a little bit before yeah, we get off the Yeah, teases. You bet. So number three for me is is uh, we're keeping it down home and local right here where we had our little uh, KCP reunion just a little Los bit ago. Los dos. Los dos. I love Mexican food and it's good, simple, no frills Mexican food at Los dos. Yeah. I like them a lot. Oh, I, I yeah. like it. Lo, 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 yeah. Lo. yeah, I think Los dos is great. Um, I don't actually have a Mexican restaurant, oddly enough, in my top three. Hmm. I, I probably might have forgotten one when I was coming up with this list, but the, the next two are taking it up a notch. So, um, no, Los Dos is great. And again, in fact, there's a good chance I may go there and get chips and salsa awesome. when I go get my Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to go run like 30 miles so that I can not wear it. But no, that's a... And for those that are watching here, we got the Match Barbecue website up on the on the the uh, screen here. So, but no, I, I let us know you can't miss with that. Yeah. My number two is going to be uh, the Grant House in downtown Vancouver. Yeah. Incredibly high quality food. We haven't actually been there in quite some time. Um, it, it's we're due. Maybe we, we should go there. There we go. Um, but they have great food. I love the seasonal selections. I love the um, the service. I'm a huge service guy. Yeah. Um, I, for me, the food can almost be mediocre, and as long as the service is at an incredibly high level, that I shouldn't. It depends on how much I'm paying, I guess. Yeah, but right. Grand House has always been. Um, I've probably been there. I don't know, we've been there five, six times, mm -hmm. something like that. Really good, and I highly recommend it, especially if you're kind of into the seasonal stuff. And I bet you right now they probably have some really kick-ass salmon or something like that. What's your number two? Number two is Matt's. Matt's barbecue. Yeah, right? that was just that just knocked it out of the park and we went there that one day. I'm trying to see if he's got a picture on here. That's what sure I'm looking for. But yeah, it's just and I'd never had that. I'd always had brisket burn ins, which mm -hmm. I love, and so I saw the pork belly burn ins on the menu. I thought, ooh, that sounds really good. I gotta try that. And man, that was insane. So I thought I gotta replicate that. So absolutely. So I I think I did a pretty good job. I don't, I don't, I would say mine was a little different than his texture wise. Might have a little more bark to it no. than his did, as I recall. Um, but I, I was very happy with how it turned out, and I will definitely keep using that recipe over and over again. It was awesome. I may actually do a brisket this weekend on the new smoker. There's a good chance, and if I do that, I'm making burn ends oh, because yeah. they're so good. They're just so good when they hit your lips. Yep. So <laughs> my number one is a, we're going to jump across the river, and it's an urban barber. Urban. <laughs> Urban Farmer PDX uh, because there's an urban farmer down in Denver as well. But um, I don't have you ever been there? No, I've not. It's in the Nines Hotel, oh. and I'm gonna put links up in the show notes for this for all these restaurants. And it is I've only been there one time, um, and I, and oddly enough, I actually had a, a bad episode afterwards because um, against the recommendation of somebody that was in our dinner party. 
I ate their wild forage mushrooms. Uh -huh. No bueno. <laughs> I will not ever eat those again in my life. But the rest of it um, went there for my buddy's uh, bachelor party. And which is, uh, you know, you can tell you're getting older when you go somewhere like that. And 20 years ago, there was no fine dining because yeah. all the money went to something else. But, um, you know, there's New York strips and then there's the stuff that we had back then that was a strip. But <laughs> anyway, no, I had the best steak I've ever had in my life. And I actually didn't order my, it was, it was Sean's steak and it was a, Grass fed organic, all that bullshit. Um, but it was a, a bone in ribeye. Okay. Prime grade. It was $72 for this day. Wow. Cut with a fork tender. And when you, and I, my steak was a, was a bone in ribeye as well. But it was not that. It was actually grain fed and uh, corn fed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, it, and it was phenomenal. It was great. But compared to his, it was the butter in the mouth. I, I just, I, I can't tell you, I can't describe how good of a cut of meat that was. Yeah. And I need to get back there as soon as possible <laughs> because I need to get a, the thought of those mushrooms out of my mind. But that steak, again, was just incredible. Unbelievable. So you're going to go with Matt's for number one, though, right? No, no that, was, that was two. That was, what was your number one? You know what it's going to be. Taco Bell? <laughs> yeah. It starts with a T. Oh yeah, um, oh, biscuit. <laughs> Surprised you didn't have any of that genre in your in your top three. Yeah, no Thai. Yeah, so Thai Terrace yeah. in Vancouver is my number one. That's uh, it's probably a good thing we don't live so close to it anymore because it was like almost like a three or four time a week habit. Going really? There. Oh man. Oh. You'd go there three or four times a no, week. No, maybe a little excess. Maybe two. Maybe two. Two to three tops. But yeah, it's just I. And I still can't get enough of it, and but it's kind of farther away now, so it's not as convenient. But well, won't they deliver it to you? They haven't. I think their delivery is like ten miles or something. It's not this far. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can meet them somewhere. Yeah, get some. Yeah, because it is worth it. Oh, I mean, because they're. I mean, well, Camas. We've already had the discussion about yeah. the different places in Camas and their Thai food. So, which ones are better? But. I, and your the bean sprouts are a big deal killer for you. So. No, uh, water chestnuts. Water chestnuts. And, and bamboo shoots yeah, is yeah. a no-go. But the other thing, even if you leave those out, I've found going to different high places, is just the base sauce that they toss it in. You know, the oyster sauce mixed with whatever else they got going in there. That obviously varies from place to place, too. And nobody can match that flavor, to me, that Thai Terrace has. There's just something with their sauce that they stir fry that stuff in. It's just... I can't find that flavor anywhere else. I've only been to Thai Terrace one time. And Thai Terrace one time. I was like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, and that was back, I think, when I worked at the clinic. Probably, but, yeah. uh, no, it was good. Yeah, but you, it, it's hard to, you know, screw that stuff up. Yeah. If, as long as you're not going somewhere. Even, have you been down to Ginger Pop? Downtown? Or down at, I, by I, uh, Columbia House? House? Yeah, I was, I've been there. I was, yeah. So so not I mean their their pad came out and stuff like that's good. They have these sticky wings that they toss in this you know one of those uh, sweet kind of chili sauce yeah, type uh, things. Right. Holy moly are they good. They come out nuclear reactor hot. Like a solid 5 minutes of letting them cool down. <laughs> but they are and they're kind of like rubber cement when you when they kind of get on your fingers and so thick they, oh yeah, it is but good. they are really really okay. good i think they toss them in like rice flour or something flash fry them at you know nine thousand degrees and then they come out but no the, that's a that's a really good place too so yeah, yeah. just more of a quick but right. they, they do have some really good beer selections yes yeah they did I that is that. one thing they do have so but with that that's going to wrap up the old freestyle here um like wes we were talking about here just a minute ago we do have some uh programming notes coming up that we want to let everyone know about. Uh, coming up this Monday, uh, we're going to have Kinetic or KCP Cooking Live Episode 2. We'll be doing a tri-tip. We're going to, I'll marinate that and we're going to use it in a street taco application, which I've done a number of times. Um, easy, squeezy thing to do. We'll go over the recipe for the marinade. Uh, but the, we're, we're shooting for no longer than 30 minutes, 35 minutes on the episode. We don't want you guys to have to get stuck watching our ugly mugs for too long, but 
Uh, and then also what I do now is I extract the audio from the shows and I drop them as a podcast. So keep an eye out on the KCP uh, podcast page for those. And then, so we've got that coming up Monday at five o'clock. Uh, then we've got Larry Hawk. We're going to be having a sit-down conversation with him on Thursday the 17th. Yeah, 27th. Two, two weeks from today. Two weeks from today, yeah. the 27th. 17th and Monday, I think. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so we've got that coming up. And then in October, we're going to do another show. We got, we're going to have cooking shows in between now and then. But we're going to have a special episode on the pork belly burnt head ends. Wes is going to teach us how to do those. More importantly, it's just an excuse for you and I to get together on a Saturday and drink beer and watch make football. barbecue and watch football. But that, that one won't be a live stream because that's no, like that's a seven-hour process. So we'll we'll film bits and pieces as we go along, and then we'll stitch it together for a video release after the fact. So. Exactly. And then uh, Wes and I were actually just talking before we went on air. We're going to start running a little bit of a business um, type, uh, kind of a run of interviews. We're starting to line up some folks. So... Some local business owners we want to have. I know it's going to be on the Monday podcast, the more serious uh, podcast. We're going to keep the Thursdays light and, and fresh and stuff like that. But we want to kind of have a series of business owners and get them in here and see what, what uh, their experience is with building a business, maintaining a business, and growing a business. And, and what, their, what their take in the current economic environment is to having... Uh, you know, whether it's hiring employees, training, um, all of those different things. So we thought we'd bring that to you guys as something that interests us as a small business ourselves. And to see, you know, we want to also have it in, a, you know, a number of different genres of, of industry. So we've got, whether it's construction, whether it's uh, automotive, uh, plumbing, whatever it may be, we're lining up our guests right now. So that will probably start late October or right after the elections. We're um, and that's going to be the last thing that I talk about is our election night coverage. We've actually started to uh, promote that on our Facebook page. We're going to, on election night, we're going to have wall-to-wall coverage starting at 7 o'clock. Wes and I will be here. We're going to be reporting on everything from the East Coast. And then as the West Coast uh, results start to roll in, we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about that. And what, what's the highlight of the evening for us, though, Wes? Tacos, Thank you. nachos, margaritas, and my dad's vote. No, that's <laughs> no, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna do we're gonna have like because it's Taco Tuesday, yep. and uh, maybe we'll have a, maybe we can do an interview with uh, Larry that we could pop up while during the episode, there we go. and uh, or maybe go live with him on the face or on the um, what FaceTime and. Uh, See how the returns go for him and yeah. stuff like that. Maybe get the first interview with him. So this will be this will be our longest podcast yet because we'll probably run a good close to three hours. I'm imagining. Oh, at night. least. So yeah, yeah we'll, we'll we'll bring them in out of so it'll be our, our longest. And we're gonna live stream the whole thing. So yeah, it's gonna you be can pop in and out at your leisure. If you get bored watching the network coverage and you don't like that, you yeah. want to come and have some fun with us. We'll be we'll be giving you the results and we'll also have some fun. Talking other stuff to, to fill the time, the dead periods. As well, well, yeah, we'll we'll bring some comedic relief yeah. to it and uh, trademark analysis. Exactly, that was my favorite thing that Wes said. But when we were when he put up the uh, Facebook event for it, but and then we'll uh, yeah, I think the most fun. Oh, and I also want to mention that we're going to have our YouTube live channel going up. So I'm going to put the uh, the link to our YouTube channel and, and please go like and subscribe to us at, at our YouTube channel and. Facebook and all the other different outlets so you can get all of our different shows. Um, but the big thing is is that we're going to probably live stream on both channels or we're going to move all the way over to YouTube Live because it seems to be a better platform for us. But that's, um, that's going to be exciting stuff and I, I am really looking forward to that. And hopefully, maybe down the road we'll have more events like that, whether it's the NFL Combine or the NFL Draft or anything like that where we can give our analysis and... Now that we've got monitors and whatnot, we can be following along with things and, and let you guys know what, and kind of keep it light, kind of keep it, you know, a little bit of seriousness, just basically what KCP is all about. A yeah. little bit, a little bit of everything. So, but with that, you got anything else? I got nothing. Well, with that, this has been Kinetic Chaos Podcast number 47. We thank you so much. We will talk to you later. See you in a few days. Here we go. Woohoo!
Okay, kids, thank you very much for watching on Facebook. Uh, watch out for, like I said, go to our page. We have our events coming up, whether it's KCP Cooking 2, um, the discussion with Larry Hoff coming up on the 27th, and the uh, election night coverage. So that's up there on the Facebook page, and spread that like wildfire if you would. We've also got our, our race to 300 likes on the Facebook page. So once we get there, we've got t-shirts to give away, maybe some other fun stuff. So keep all that in mind, and please continue to spread the good word. We really appreciate it. Very Thank much, you very so. much. Thank you. See, See you later. later.